Welcome back to another edition of 60 Plus Seconds, U.S. Wartime Edition. From the American Revolution to the Iraq War, the U.S. has fought in 12 major wars. Do you know their names? Where they were fought and why? Well, here's a quick look. This video was requested by Anthony Carrillo. Check him out on G Plus as Andre Carrillo. So let's learn something new, shall we? Here's a few quick hitters before we start. Since the US was founded in 1776, she has been at war during 214 out of 235 calendar years of existence. In other words, there are only 21 calendar years in which the US did not wage any wars. So if you pick any year since 1776, there is about a 91% chance that America was involved in some war during that calendar year. Also, the United States has never gone a decade without war. The only time the U.S. went five years without war was 1935 to 1940, and that was during the isolationist period of the Great Depression. The United States' first war was the Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783. U.S. troops engaged, 217,000. American battle deaths, 4,435. The first shots rang out on the morning of April 19, 1775 in Lexington, Massachusetts. At the Battle of Bunker Hill, Colonial Officer William Prescott ordered, Do not fire until you see the white of their eyes. His troops had the courage and discipline to hold their fire until the enemy was near. An early sign that the ragtag American army had a chance of defeating the well-trained, well-armed British troops. The Treaty of Paris was signed in 1783, and Great Britain acknowledged America's independence. This war lasted from 1812 to 1815. War was declared on June 18, 1812. U.S. troops engaged, 286,730. American battle deaths, 2,260, during its war with France. America passed a series of laws that closed its ports to British ships that were loaded with goods they planned to sell in the U.S. and to prevent their western expansion by trying to claim land in what was then the Northwest Territories, now the Ohio River Valley, and also that they were trying to arm the American Indians. The Treaty of Ghent was signed in 1814. The British gave up their demands for the Great Lakes region and the American Indian state under British rule. Up next, we have the Mexican War, 1846 to 1848. U.S. troops engaged, 78,718. American battle deaths, 1,733. This is a war where the United States fought against Mexico over Texas and California. The war was fought in the name of Manifest Destiny, the belief that the United States should possess the entire continent from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans. As the war waged on, U.S. troops moved west and claimed Santa Fe, New Mexico in 1846, and then California in 1847. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in 1848. Mexico gave up two-fifths of its territory and received $15 million from the U.S. for damages. Up next, we have the Civil War, 1861 to 1865. U.S. troops engaged, 2.213 million Battle deaths, 140,414. The northern states and southern states fought over slavery and states' rights. The war began on April 12, 1861, when the Confederates fired on Charleston, South Carolina's Fort Sumner. More than 180,000 black soldiers fought in the Union Army. By the end of the war, they made up 10% of the Union troops. Both free African-American and runaway slaves volunteered as soldiers. The Union victory meant readmission to the seceded states and ended slavery. Up next, we have the Spanish-American War, 1898. War with Spain was declared in April, 1898. U.S. troops engaged, 306,760. American battle deaths, 385. Spain declared war on the United States because the U.S. supported Cuba's wish to be independent of Spanish rule. The Spanish military forced Cubans into slave communities and thousands died from disease and starvation. American ships destroyed the Spanish fleet off Santiago, Cuba, forcing that city to surrender and signaling the end of the Spanish resistance. The Treaty of Paris was signed in 1898. Cuba was freed. The U.S. obtained the Philippines for $20 million and Puerto Rico and Guam were seceded to the U.S. Next, we have World War I, the biggest involvement in U.S. war up to this point. The war was from 1914 to 1918, but the U.S. was only involved from 1917 to 1918. U.S. troops engaged, 4.734 million. American casualties, 53,402. The U.S. joined the allies of Britain, France, Russia, Italy, and Japan, who were at war with the Central Powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Turkey. After German subs began sinking unarmed ships, notably the Lustiana. World War I was largely characterized by trench warfare. Each army dug protective trenches, long, deep rows of ditches dug in the ground in which they slept, ate, and fought against the enemy. The Treaty of Versailles, signed in 1919, 
was one of five peace treaties signed after the Central Powers surrendered to the Allies. A famous quote from President Woodrow Wilson in this war was, the world must be made safe for democracy. Up next is World War II, one of the biggest and bloodiest battles of all time. This battle ranged from 1939 to 1945, but the US was only involved from 1941 to 1946. Another famous quote from President Franklin D. Roosevelt was, I have seen war, I hate war. US troops engaged, 16,112,566. American casualties, a staggering 291,557. One of the most horrific chapters of the war was the Holocaust, the systematic annihilation of about 6 million Jews, as well as millions of others who did not conform to Nazi Germany's racist ideas. American troops clashed with the Japanese in the Philippines and joined with British troops in North Africa to surrender and join the Allies in 1943, forever up until this point, as well as the most difficult to settle. The world remained politically unstable, major cities had been turned to rubble by bombings, and modern weapons combined with Germany's attempt to exterminate entire religion. Next up, we have the Korean War, 1950 to 1953. US troops engaged, 5.72 million. American battle deaths, 33,741. In this war, North Korea's communist forces fought against South Korea's non-communist forces supported by UN forces, principally made up of US troops. North Korea moved south quickly at first and captured the South Korean capital of Seoul. Heavy fighting raged at the 38th parallel, which became the post-war border between the two countries. After the 1953 truce at Panmunjom, North Korea, North and South Korea remained separate, as before the war. From 1954 to 1975, we have the Vietnam War. U.S. involvement was from 1961 to 1975. U.S. troops engaged, 8.744 million. American battle deaths, 47,410. The U.S. helped non-communist South Vietnam fight invasions by communist North Vietnam. North Vietnamese torpedo boats reportedly attack U.S. destroyers in the Gulf of Tonkin on August 2, 1964. President Johnson ordered retaliatory airstrikes. By the end of 1965, the number of American troops in Southeast Asia rose to more than 184,000, and by 1968, stood at more than 525,000. A ceasefire for this war was signed in Paris in 1973. War broke out again later in the region, but North Vietnam's victory in 1975 ended the longest war in which the U.S. had ever been involved. Persian Gulf War, 1991, U.S. troops engaged, 2.183 million, Allied casualties, 147. President Bush sent 430,000 troops to Saudi Arabia to lead the UN-sponsored coalition and protect that country from an attack by Iraq. A ground war soon followed. US and coalition forces were too much for Iraq President Saddam Hussein and his troops, and the attack ended in four days. Iraq withdrew from Kuwait on February 28, 1991, though not before setting fire to more than 500 Kuwaiti oil wells. Officially, ceasefire was declared in 1991. Afghan War, 2002. Afghan's Taliban government harbored Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda terrorist group who were responsible for the September 11, 2001 attacks on the United States. After they refused to turn over bin Laden, the US and UN coalition forces attacked. The outcome of this war was the Taliban government was ousted and many terrorist camps in Afghanistan were destroyed. The Taliban surrendered within two months, much more quickly than expected. The Taliban and Al-Qaeda began to regroup in 2003 after the United States shifted its military efforts to fighting the war in Iraq. Attacks on US and NATO troops have continued since. Iraq War, 2003. Dictator Saddam Hussein's alleged possession of illegal weapons of mass destruction and Iraq's suspected ties to terrorism prompted the US and Britain to invade and topple his government. Iraq was defeated and Saddam Hussein was removed from power. American and some coalition troops remain in Iraq, fighting and rebuilding. Shiites and Sunnis have started fighting each other, and many observers consider the situation in Iraq to be a civil war. In December 2003, U.S. troops captured Saddam Hussein near his hometown of Tikrit and was found guilty of crimes against humanity and executed in 2006. And that's a wrap for this edition of 60 Plus Seconds. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next episodes. If you have any comments, questions, or video requests, Leave them in the comments section below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. 
Thanks again, and have a nice day.